This is a, a military medical center. Uh, it's part of the Army Medical Command. Um, and the whole role is to provide patient care uh, and training um, to military members, their families, uh, retirees, retiree family members. There's twofold there. One is the patient care to those beneficiaries and the other is the training to the medical staff that then of course has a, a mission to deploy and you know, help fight our nation's wars if, uh, if we're called to do so. It really is important to know that we can't separate these things. And so all the way from the Surgeon General level, so the Surgeon General of the Army, you know, puts forth uh, four priorities uh, that are combat casualty care. So that's the reason the, the Army has a medical force and Department of Defense has a medical force to begin with. Um, but in order to do that, we, we have to have a ready medical force. So these medical professionals have to be trained. Um, we have to make sure that the rest of the force is ready from a medical standpoint, so their deployment readiness, their health readiness. Um, and then we also have to take care of their beneficiaries, their families, and, and everybody that's associated with them. Those things aren't separate, so they're all connected. So in order to have a ready medical force, you have to do the patient care. So you maintain your readiness and your skill set and you train all of the people in the graduate medical education programs and all of the allied health training programs by providing patient care. And then that patient care and the skills you gain from that allow you to then go downrange and treat wartime casualties. The Base Realignment and Closure Act of 2005 uh, combined the inpatient, all of the inpatient services between the Army and Air Force here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. the, the hospital, the, the original hospital, Brook Army Medical Center, was opened here on this campus in 1996 uh, and, and existed here. Wilford Hall Medical Center was on Lackland and, and then BRAC combined the inpatient services. Now, not all the outpatient services, but the inpatient services. And so then they, they built this building that we're sitting in, an addition to the original hospital. Uh, and then this opened in late 2011. They started the move of all the people here in 2012. Uh, and now we have an integrated staff um, that is Army and Air Force predominantly, but we also have Navy. We have some Coast Guard members. We have some National Public Health Service. And of course, all of our uh, federal civilians and contractors also. When we talk about the bed number, the, the bed number, there's some different numbers. So first of all, we're licensed to have 456 beds. Uh, we physically have rooms and equipment for 425 beds. Um, and, and again, those two numbers are really, that's the, the capacity we could surge to if we needed to. On a daily basis, um, we currently have and we staff 364 beds on a daily basis. We actually have 42 buildings uh, on Joint Base San Antonio and around the city. We have leased uh, community uh, clinics that are in San Antonio. Um, and, and all of that space together is slightly over 3 million square feet of clinical and administrative space. Uh, and the entire staff, when you include um, all of the active duty uh, of all services, uh, civilians, contractors, volunteers. So we have over 450 volunteers uh, that are part of the hospital. And then of course the Warrior Transition Battalion uh, and, and the soldiers that are assigned to that battalion. All total it, it fluctuates between about 8,700 and 8,900 people. If you look at uh, a lot of articles that have been published in a lot of civilian literature uh, where they look at complexity in different industries, um, hospitals, specifically large medical centers, are rated as being one of the most complex, if not the most complex organization that exists. Um, all the different professional types, all the different services, all of the different people that come in to receive services. Um, and, and so we see all of that here. And, and when you get to a, a pretty large size with that many people in that many buildings, um, communication is always a challenge. Trying to make sure that, uh, that the messages and different policies, different priorities get communicated clearly and sort of everyone in the organization is aligned to what those priorities are. 
Um, I think we do a, a pretty good job here, and of course we have our, our communication staff headed by Mr. Mitchell that, that really helps with that. Um, but, but it is something that you have to work at every day uh, because at it, it, the heart of almost every problem we have, you know, at least 90% of all the problems or issues we have, it's some sort of miscommunication. That's why we have an agreement uh, to be one of the level one trauma centers for the city of San Antonio. So we don't just take military beneficiaries as trauma patients. We take all trauma patients from a 22 county region. We take burn patients from a 46 county region. Um, we're one of only five burn centers in the state of Texas. And by taking those patients, those civilian patients, it allows our staff to remain ready. Um, very similar thing with our commander. Uh, he, he operationalizes those four you know, priorities from the Surgeon General by saying, you know, quality, safe patient care, um, maximizing uh, our resources that we're given, and scholarship in action. Uh, and so again, we're, we're trying to, to use this facility and use all the resources that the American people have given us to, to provide as much care and train as many medical professionals as we can. Uh, so then we can we can go forward and do uh, do our job when when we're needed if if we're ever in conflict. This place and and I think it's it's not just this place. There's a few places uh, that, in my opinion, and it's not to take away anything uh, from any other place. Um, there's a few places that that are really special just because of some of the unique things that they offer. Um, here at this facility. Um, and part of this is sort of the history of Brook Army Medical Center, stuff that's always been here. And then some of this is a new legacy with the integration uh, of the Air Force side when, when BRAC caused us to, to combine the inpatient services. We have the, the Center for the Intrepid that is um, really cutting edge and unique rehabilitation and, and amputee services. Um, we have the DOD's only bone marrow transplant center. We have the Department of Defense's only burn center. We're the only level one trauma center in the Department of Defense. Um, and, and I could go on with other services that are unique uh, and, and quite frankly, research that is unique um, because we have just an amazing group of, of clinicians here that are advancing medicine, not just for the military, but, but for all of medicine. Um, and when you have that combination of people and you have the patient population uh, that, where those patients are special. There's a reason why we exist to serve them. Um, all of that comes together to create a place that, that's really unique. It's, a, it's an unbelievable honor for people to work here. And you hear stories and, and, and have people share experiences with you all the time that, that are just unbelievably moving. Um, and you, you get to know the people here and you realize that a lot of them are working here just to, to serve and to contribute. Um, they have a slightly different orientation than in some places. They're, they're not necessarily after the money or the recognition. They could leave federal service and quite frankly make a lot more money somewhere else. Um, but part of their life is contributing and, and giving that service to the nation, um, and it becomes really special to them. The leadership of the organization, you know, we really see that as, as something that we have to respect and encourage. We have to try to enable them uh, and remove roadblocks so they can really, uh, in, in some respect, spread their wings and, and try to um, benefit our, our patients as much as possible. Um, and, and we really do try to, to do as much as we can for the population that by law we're, we're allowed to serve.